Here's something that you didn't know. Two of those special atomic bombs haven't gone off. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Addie Gannon of Well Loved Clothing and today I have something so much fun for you because I'm obviously in my kitchen with my sewing machine so we are doing a thrift flip today. I am super excited because it is a gross day outside and I just love to be super creative on those days. It feels like a cozy stay inside day and so I'm going to be tackling some pieces that I have wanted to do for a while and just took a little while to find the perfect fabric for it. So my thrift flips are where I take thrifted pieces that are not so cute and turn them into some incredible pieces. So we're going to take some upholstery fabrics and some dresses and just rip them up, put them all together, and make some really incredible pieces today. I love thrift flips because you can really take a piece and make it your own, make it completely express your own personal style, which is the most classic and the most beautiful thing and the thing that we love the most here at Well Loved. So we're going to do just that and take some not so cute pieces and make them even more sustainable cuties. So let's get started with the first piece. number one today is in the title, it's in the description, it's probably one of the reasons that you picked this video, but it is these amazing giant collars. They have been everywhere for a while and I have a couple blouses that I thrifted with them on it, but I really wanted to challenge myself to thrift flip one and make one out of some fun fabric. So I'm actually going to be making two of these today, a little bit different ideas on both of them. But the first one that we're going after is just this beautiful white ruffled collar with the tie around the neck. I just think it is so cute and such a fun piece to add to any outfit to really add some self-expression. And so I found this dress. So it's pretty much just this like white sort of linen-y kind of stiff fabric dress. This is also a great piece because this white fabric is very stiff and so it'll make a really great standout collar. Button downs are also really good fabrics to make these collars from because they're that nice thick stiff cottony material. But why I loved it the most is because of the ruffles on the top and bottom of this dress. And so I'm hoping to take those ruffles, put them around the edge, and really just tear this thing up and make it something completely new to add to all of my outfits and make them so much more prairie and so much cuter and staying very much so on trend with these crazy collars. So without further ado, let's jump right into this beautiful little collar thrift flip. Let's do it. First things first, I need to take off the ruffle on the bottom of this dress. And so I started the seamer fit and then realized I could just cut it and wouldn't have to finish the edge. So once I got that cut off, I laid my piece flat and then used a template and cut my pieces for the main part of my collar. So these were supposed to be cut on the fold, but since I had certain seams down this dress that I didn't want in the collar, I just cut four separate pieces. Once I had all those pieces cut out, I laid them face to face flat so that I could make the giant loop that makes the whole collar. And I pinned the edges together and took it to my sewing machine to sew that seam down the So now that I have my basic structure of the collar, I'm going to start with the ruffle. So I accidentally cut this in half because I just wasn't thinking. I really only needed to put one slit in the side of the ruffle because it's gonna go all the way around from one side to the other side of the collar. I'm also cutting off the straps of this dress to use them as the little front tie to connect up the front of the piece. So after all of the cutting up of everything on this dress, I can now start pinning the pieces together to make the full collar. So here's the shape that I was talking about with the seam down the center, and I'm going to lay one flat and then put my ruffle inside of that facing the center because I want it to be facing the outside, obviously, when I'm done with this. When I have my ruffle placed pretty rough, lol, where it needs to be, then I'm laying the other piece of the collar on top flat and starting to basically sandwich that ruffle between all of these pieces. With my pieces where I want them, I am starting to pin from the center to the outside and I want this ruffle to go all the way around the outside, but also up the center to the point in the middle of the neck. So the only part that's not gonna have ruffles is right around that center neck hole. So I'm just pinning this all the way around and taking it to my sewing machine to sew the outer edge of this piece. 
With the outer edge stitched, I now need to put my straps where they need to go so this can tie very cute with a little bow in the center. And so I'm just going to place those inside facing the outside the same place that the ruffle was going and pin that in so that I can stitch the inside circle of this neck. I don't want to stitch the whole inside of this circle closed, so I'm leaving a two inch opening in the center so that I can flip this collar right side out once it's all sewn, which we are doing right now. Again, leaving that two inch opening in the center, and once those stitches are sewn, we can flip it inside out and make sure it's all laying flat and looks perfect, and then sew down the center two inches on the outside, and this collar is done. <laughs> believe that this turned out so good this fabric is absolutely perfect for it it's almost a little bit pillowy but the ruffle on the edge it just took so much less so much less so I don't know so much less time I guess it took so much shorter let's say that to make this because I didn't have to build my own ruffle out of this so it was already ruffled and then I didn't have to make this little tie in the center either because this was just the straps of the dress so yes I'm going to be wearing this all the time consider this just my staple my staple piece I love the yoke in the back of it it's so cute I'm so in love with these collars and we're gonna make another one so let's just jump right in because I cannot handle how adorable this is so cute <laughs> So excited for all of these collars. So the next piece that I have is this beautiful purple fabric that I will be turning into a collar like this. So I love these collars. They are more quilted, a little bit more of a statement, kind of like a cape more than a collar, but I wanted to do a little bit of a marriage between the two for this one. So the reason I chose this fabric is because it is a gorgeous lavender pillowcase with this beautiful detailing throughout. So I thought it was a really cool textural element, but I think the color is also a really good color for a collar. What? That's gonna get really difficult to say during this video. It's just this light lavender color that I love to toss on top of any outfit. So for me, this is a very versatile color, but I would suggest if you're going to make one of these to find a color that really works with everything in your wardrobe, but can still be a really fun statement on top of an outfit. So I also love this fabric because of the ruffles on the edge. I think those ruffles just make these collars really cute. And all of the collars that I've looked at recently have this kind of scalloped edge, not so much a ruffle, more scallop. So we're going to take this one and make another collar, but maybe a little bit more of a capey one, a little bit bigger, a little bit curly crazier to just be even more of a statement because that's what we love. So let's get started with this crazy purple quilted collar. To be honest, I just kind of stood here and stared at this forever because I didn't want it to just look like there was a blanket around my neck. So I just stared at it until I got the vision, which I did, thankfully. And so first things first, I needed to measure how big I wanted it to be on the front and the back and how long from bust to back that it needed to be also. So once I had those measurements, I could start cutting down this large piece of fabric, but I wanted to keep the scalloped edge. So I'm mainly gonna be cutting from the center piece. So I needed to see where the center was from both sides. So I measured that and then cut directly down the center so that I could chop those pieces down to reconnect them to make this collar. So this piece was originally 24 inches, but I wanted it to be 11 inches wide. And so I'm chopping out the excess from both sides of the halves that I just cut. So we have an even shape in the center. I'm also doing this on the length too, to make it 14 inches from front to back. Basically, I was just cutting it up to make it into a smaller square so that it wasn't just a giant pillowcase around my neck. So once I have the shape where I wanted it, I needed to cut the center neck hole. So I measured my neck and cut a hole about two or three inches a little bit bigger than that, just so it sits wider on my neck. So we are now ready to reassemble all of the cut up pieces that we have. So I am laying them flat face to face and pinning them all together along the side edges. So that's gonna have two seams across the shoulders and one seam down the back but with the open in the front with the tie so I'm taking it to my machine to sew down all of those edges that I just pinned and then also doing my zigzag stitch on the edge just to finish those so there's no fraying 
After the two side pieces are sewn together, I am sewing just the back of this piece so that the front can stay open and finished for the tie front. And once that's sewn down, I can start to finish the front edge and the edge around the collar. So I'm essentially going to be making facing for the round edge and the front edge. And then I'm also going to need to use a tie. So I'm just measuring how long I need to make these facing pieces and then cutting large strips out of the excess fabric that I have to make the facing. With all of those cut, I am now placing the pieces face to face with the front of the fabric. And for the tie, I am laying that tie, sandwiching it the same way we did as the ruffle and pinning all of that down, sewing that seam down, and then rolling it flat to make about an inch worth of facing on the back and folding it down so it has a really nice edge. And then sewing that facing to the collar to finish that front piece. Final step, we are going to face the neckline also. So we're going to do the same process of pinning the long strip all the way around the collar face to face, sewing those pieces together face to face, and then rolling it, doing that same process to create about a half inch facing. I wanted this one a little bit thinner so it doesn't stand up so high on the neck. Pinning that all around the edge, sewing that final seam down, and then this collar is done. Oh my goodness, once again, a killer collar that's going to top all of my outfits. This one is just so fun and quirky and I can see it paired with so many fun colors. Even like if I had just this dress on underneath here with this little purple collar on top, like how dang cute is that? So definitely another super colorful staple, super fun. I love this little funky edge on here and I like how stiff it is too. And I actually used the bow from the dress that I'm gonna be flipping today to create this little piece right here. So I'm really loving how this one turned out. I love the square shape I think it's so much fun so I cannot wait to wear all of these super fun collars so I have one more flip for you so let's get to it okay so we are moving on from the collars for this final piece of this video to make something really show-stopping it is this incredible dress that I have wanted forever and I feel like it's just the dress, like it's the it girl dress. Everyone has one, or if you don't, you're trying to get one. And they're just amazing. The silhouette is so cute. I love the short with the puffy sleeve, all the volume in it. So I wanted to make my own to kind of challenge myself to have a vision for one of these dresses and to just make one myself because it's fun to tell people that you make stuff. So to make this dress something that I really love and that really feels like me, I'm going to be using two fabrics from two different pieces. So I am using this beautiful purple Purple maxi dress and then these amazing wide leg pants that the zipper and buttons have just been destroyed on. <laughs> so this maxi dress is this beautiful mauve purple gingham. I love this because it already has enough fabric to do pretty much anything that I want to with it, but the color on this is so good. It's almost like a taupey purple, and I already love the shape that this has, so we're just going to work on adding volume and structure and crazy puff sleeves. And so then for the puff sleeve on this dress, I'm going to be using these green pants that are a green gingham also so this is a little bit more of a classic gingham that I feel like most people see but they're about the same fabrics the pants are a little bit silkier which I love for the sleeve so that's really gonna be a statement sleeve and the two-tone purple and green is so right now so good and I'm absolutely loving it so we are just gonna upcycle these two pieces and really give them both a ton of new life and make this amazing dress that I'm so excited for so let's just jump in and do it because I cannot wait anymore Okay, so this piece is just a whole bunch of cutting stuff off of the purple dress, essentially. So I wanted to gather the skirt more and do like half the length of it. And so I needed to take the skirt off. So I'm just seam ripping that across the whole thing and then taking off the sleeves also. So once I just took that whole dress apart, basically, I am going to take the skirt and lay it flat so that I can cut it directly in half. I want to cut this in half because I want the skirt to be a lot fuller. And so I'm just going to make it a lot shorter also 
to have that flouncy dress and add the bottom fabric to the center fabric to make a really gathered piece. So once that's cut, I'm going to cut the side seams of the top and bottom of the skirt so that I can reconnect them and make one giant panel. So I'm doing exactly that and taking it to my sewing machine and sewing down those edges that I just cut. So we have this massive piece of skirt. So since one of the edges was cut out of the center of the skirt, I now have to finish it. So I'm doing the same facing that I did on the last collar. So I'm taking the sleeve and cutting a piece out of that after I've measured the bottom of this skirt. It's only half of it because the other half was the bottom of the skirt so it was already finished. So once we have that cut, I'm laying it flat and pinning it face to face and sewing that seam to connect the facing. And then I should be ironing this, but I am not. I am so sorry for all those people who are sticklers about irons. Please don't kill me, but I'm folding it over to make that facing and pinning it flat with about a half inch facing on it. So once that is all pinned down to the best of my ability, no ironing, I know. And I am sewing that piece down so that the bottom hem of this dress is completely done. That bottom stitch done thus begins the longest stitch of my life. So I'm adjusting my settings to be a very long and low tension stitch because we're going to gather the skirt. With my settings correct, I am about a half an inch from the edge of this skirt and I am just sewing one long seam, but I'm going to be sewing four seams around this skirt so that it's not one long gather that I have to keep pushing across. It just makes gathering a lot easier. So I'm going from the back zipper to the side seam and then the side to the front, front to side, side to zipper. So so let's finish this seam and we will start gathering. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot to get any footage of me gathering because I was so dang focused. But essentially you just pull one of the strings and I like to tie a knot in my string so it doesn't pull the whole thing out. And it basically just makes this ruffled skirt like you can see right here. And I pin it pretty much every inch just to make sure that it doesn't move. And I pin it directly to the fabric so that it only needs one stitch to be connected and gathered at the same time. So now that it's all pinned down and ready to go, we can can sew that down all the way across with one long stitch. I also used the zigzag stitch on the edge just to finish that out and make sure there was no fraying. So with the longest sewing session of my life almost done, I am reattaching the zipper since I already reconnected the top and bottom of the dress with the gather stitch. So I pinned the heck out of this thing and then just reattached the zipper to the bottom of the dress, which means now we can move on to sleeves. So I'm taking those beautiful gingham pants and cutting off the pant leg from crotch to basically upper hip so that it'll already have the shape of a sleeve. I then mark where I want my gather to begin and end right at the edges of the armpit because you don't want to gather through the armpit. It just makes it look kind of weird. So then I take it to my machine and do that long stitch again to gather. And once I have that done, I am going to insert it into the dress so it'll be where the sleeve is going to go and then start gathering it and pinning it down. So I pin the flat parts of the armpit down first and then gather pulling my thread around the upper piece of the shoulder and making sure that my shoulder seam of the pant, which is now the sleeve, match up with the shoulder seam of the dress. So now that it's placed and gathered beautifully, we are going to sew the seam around that edge and then finish the edge again with a zigzag stitch and we can complete the sleeve. We're almost done. So final and most important piece is the elastic around the sleeve to make the sleeve extremely puffy and still have that cute shape at the bottom. So I'm measuring it around my wrist and then cutting it to the correct length. So luckily these pants already have an invisible hem on the bottom, so I don't actually have to make a pocket for this elastic. So I am using the safety pin trick and just inserting the elastic in that space and shoving it all the way around. And once it comes out the other side, I am stitching that together, closing the little hole I made, repeating that process on the other sleeve, and this dress is done! <laughs> even know what to say about this. I mean, it is the perfect dress. Like the perfect dress. Just this purple gingham. Excuse the sports bra. I'm comfy today. <laughs> but the, the purple, whoa. I need to calm down. The purple gingham with this beautiful light green gingham and the giant sleeve with just all of the volume. I'm so glad that I gathered this. I was just gonna cut it, but it makes it so much cuter with this little flounce to it. <gasps> I'm honestly just <laughs> so in love with this. I mean, so cute. Also, I had an idea while I was trying this on. 
like just it's so cute a dream come true and I'm so glad that you could be here to do this with me today thank you so much for thrift flipping with me and making my dream pieces I feel like a dreamy it girl now and I'm just never gonna take it off so let me know which piece is your favorite in the comments below subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week you are well loved bye <laughs>